Guys and gals, and welcome. So today we're going to be doing something fun. We're going to be creating a new character. It's a theory craft. We're going to be theory crafting a character. Now, when I theory craft a character, I always like to have a specific set of rules in mind, or like a kind of like a, a starting point or a launching point, or whatever what do you call it. This the launching point for this particular character is that I want to make a character that can literally lock down everything. Like that's his goal. His goal is is the ability to lock down everything. And uh, so we have aptly named him the Lockdown Character. I hope you'll join me today as we theorycraft this character. We're going to start off on Hero Editor and then we're going to work our way into the game. Alright. Yeah. All right, we gotta we gotta we gotta get some stretches done before we start this. It's gonna be a, quite a theory craft. So, what are our goals for our theory craft? Well, our goals for our theory craft are to make a character that can perform quite a few uh, different things. All right. So let's let's make a little notepad here first. So let's start out with the notepad. All right. Ugh, Cody. Like, what the hell, buddy? You just came over here and just slimed me like I'm on the movie Ghostbusters. It's disgusting. I mean, you just this straight up slimed me, buddy. Like, what am I? What am I, Bill Murray? <laughs> it's disgusting. I'm glad you got something to eat, buddy. But that was gross. <laughs> okay, so what are the goals for our build today? All right, so we want a character that can do it all. And what do I mean by do it all? Well, crowd control, right? So what are the various methods of crowd control when it comes to Diablo? I'm holding my arm up so he doesn't slime me again. Um, what are the various elements of crowd control when it comes to Diablo? Well, in Diablo, there are <laughs> many different types of crowd control. Uh, first off, we have stuns. Um, you could also say micro stuns. So there's not just stuns, but there's also micro stuns. Um, both of these are very effective. Uh, there's also faster hit recovery stuns. Uh, faster hit recovery stuns are an entirely different form of stunning, which is something that you can also do. So we've got basically three different types of stuns. Now, what would a stun be considered? Well, a stun would be something like a 10 second, uh, you know, or less stun, something like that. That's, that's very, let's, let's say, let's say one to 10 seconds. So like between whole numbers, right? Micro stuns are generally considered things that are below one second. So like 0.1 to like 0.9 seconds, things like that would be considered micro stuns. Uh, faster hit recovery stuns have to do with damage output. Uh, so this is actually specifically because you're doing large amounts of damage and the large amounts of damage equals higher faster hit recovery stun percentage. Now, what is a faster hit recovery stun? Well, it's basically just the time that it takes for a monster or a player to recover from a large hit. And it's usually not very long, um, anywhere between like point, like five of a second to like point 10 of a second, like something like that. It's it's not a particularly very long time. It's a, it's a very short, you know, quote unquote, stun. <laughs> um, uh, Kubis is a crowd control effect. Um, there's also slows target buy. Uh, slows target buy is a very effective uh, s crowd control effect. Um, it does not work on certain monsters, however, but it does uh, stack up to a total of 80%, uh, which is not a cumulative stacking of, say, 20 plus 20 equals 40. Um, that is not correct. It is more like... Uh, 100 minus 20 equals 80, and then 80 minus 20 equals, uh, which my quick math is terrible. Uh, I, I was I was at least able to do the 100. You guys will give me that. So minus 20% uh, gives you 16. So, so that's 64, right? So you can see how one is 20, and then the next one is 
16 in that succession, so it continually decreases in effectiveness as it goes forward. So slowest target is another way that we can potentially add in more crowd control effects. Um, another way to add in crowd control effects is chilling. So when things are chilled, they gain more crowd control. Uh, they, they get they get chilled. Now, cannot be frozen protects against that in PvP, but most monsters don't have cannot be frozen. There's very few monsters in the game that are completely immune to chilling effects. Um, and a cold sunder helps out a ton with that. So then, then you have even more. So you have tons and tons of different chilling effects as you can potentially come in. Another very important thing about chilling effects that a lot of people don't know is that uh, resistance uh, directly affects duration. So the duration of a chilling effect is increased by lowering the resistance of the monster that you are hitting. Right, so the lower the monster is the, in resistance, the the longer the duration. This is why cold sorceresses. If you guys don't know this, cold sorceresses should always put one point in cold mastery, even if you are a fiery lightning sorceress, because when you use your frozen armor or your chilling armor or your shivering armor, and it chills or freezes the monster, that resistance, that negative resistance that cold mastery applies, increases the duration of your frozen armor chilling effect drastically, which of course makes it more likely that you will survive an encounter with a nasty group of monsters. Um, then there are also freezing effects. Um, freezing effects are also very similar. So freezing effects are also affected by resistance. They're usually shorter, but the monster is stopped completely during the freezing effect, which basically means that they can do absolutely nothing during that period of time. Um, so freezing effects also um, are affected by resistance uh, effects duration. All right, so we've got a couple different things going on here. Um, and then on top of this, we also have another form of crowd control, which is in Diablo, which is known as AI uh, altering effects. Now, this is a rather broad subject, and uh, basically AI altering effects includes things like blindness, uh, which is a really good, uh, really good crowd control effect, by the way. Uh, blindness, um, confuse, um, also things like... Uh, I'm trying to think here. Attract. Uh, and there's another one. A conversion. Uh, I know there's at least one more that I'm missing here. I mean, technically, Mind Blast is the same thing as conversion. But uh, it's fine. Uh, another one is Knockback. Uh, that's probably the last one. And probably the only one that we won't use because we're a melee character and we really don't want to use that one because that one can potentially be nasty for us. Um, basically basically making it so that it's even more difficult to apply our ground control effects. Uh, thank you, Terror. That's another good one. Uh, which is also uh, Hit Causes Monster to Flee, uh, which is... Not really all the greatest. There's a lot of different terror effects. Now, for the sake of argument, we're probably not going to be using terror or knockback. Um, and we're probably not going to be using conversion. Um, confuse might be a little bit out of the realm of possibility. Uh, strictly because of the way that we're going to be setting up this character. It kind of precludes being hit for the most part. Uh, but blindness is definitely an option. So, so out of all of these, what are we going to be using? I guess that's the question, right? So first off, we're definitely going to be using uh, stuns. Um, we're going to have our own form of stuns that are going to be spamming on a regular basis, uh, which should be extremely effective. Uh, we are going to be using slows target, uh, a pretty massive amount of slows target at that. Uh, so our character should be slowing down targets by a pretty drastic amount, uh, almost to a complete crawl. Now, because of this, this will also kind of preclude... Um, a specific type of thing that we can do, uh, which is basically um, uh, procking effects that are caused by being hit. Uh, this is probably not going to work well with slow target because obviously if we slow the target down to the point where they're literally like... <gasps> It's going to be pretty hard to proc those effects, right? Because of how slow that they're going. And that's kind of the goal that we have here is to make them so ridiculously slow 
so ridiculously ground controlled that they can't even think to attack us. Like, we will be probably one of the safest characters that has ever existed within the realm of Diablo 2, just simply by the fact that we will have so many various ways to cause the monsters to have not a very good time hitting us. Um, and how are we going to achieve, achieve all this? Well, I'm going to be using a druid, first off, and uh, and I've been thinking about this one a lot. So we're we're gonna we're gonna come across some various methods that I'm going to use to apply these effects, and uh, we're probably going to be a werewolf, by the way. Spoiler, uh, that's that's definitely one of the things we're going to do. I wish I could make this window bigger. Hmm. I wonder if I, maybe if I, possibly, I don't, hmm, I could just mess up the whole stream, but let's, let's try this, just, just, just to see if maybe it'll work, uh, okay, that's slightly better, hold on, let's go lower, let's go even lower, okay, all right, we'll change it back in a second, but basically I'm going to change the resolution down so that the size of the window goes up. That way you guys can actually see what's going on. Right. <laughs> I could probably make it even smaller. Hold on, let me let me see. Let me try and make it even smaller. Hold on, uh, 1,280 by 768. There you go. Look at that. It's so good. It's I can't get my mouse over there to... Oh, there we go. Okay. There's like a little channel pathway to like travel in between the two monitors, and it's and I gotta like find it with the mouse so I can travel in between the two monitors. Apparently, it's right. Apparently, it's right here, a little bit lower than that. See how it turns into a little arrow there? <laughs> okay. All right. Let's uh, let's get this working. Okay. So first off, the first thing we're gonna be putting on this character, um, which is gonna help us out tremendously for the stun portion of this character. Um, is we're going to be putting on the Carrion Wind Rings. The Carrion Wind Rings, I've used these in a, a similar build uh, previous. Not not in this crazy, but it's it was used in a similar build, and basically the entire point of the rings is to use the procking effects, which is the twisters. So we're going to be using the twister effects, and I'm totally blanking on where to click. A wisp projector, Carrion Wind. All right, And because of the Carrion Winds, we're going to have plenty of life. We'll have damage taken goes to mana. We won't have to worry about mana all that much. Um, but it's really the 8% chance to cast level 13 twisters. Now, if you guys are unaware of how this works, when you have two chances that are the same level, the percentage stacks, which means I'd be looking at a 16% chance to proc twisters on striking, which is exactly what we want. We want that, that chance to proc the twisters. That's going to be our stuns. Um, the next thing that we're going to be looking at is um, how do we get... Everything that we want, our chilling effects, our, you know, our, like, everything that's going to make our character crazy in terms of crowd control. And I, and I put a lot of thought into this, and I think the best item uh, by far is going to be the Ice Bow. And I'm in the wrong doojanks. Hold on. Wrong doojanks. Now, you might be asking why the Ice Bow. Well, there's a lot of interesting things on the Ice Bow that definitely make it um, rather interesting for a crowd control character. First off, it gives you level 18 Holy Freeze, which level 18 Holy Freeze is going to give us a pretty decent level of slows target by. Um, this is going to be right off the top. Essentially, by having this on, we will have a permanent aura around us uh, which is going to give us a s permanent slows target of, uh, let's see, level 18, 53%. Um, it's also going to have a 15.3 yard radius, which is plenty large enough to dish out some pretty nice freezes target, or rather hold, or, or slows target by, uh, which is going to help us out tremendously for this character. Um, on top of this, it also has a 25% chance to cast level 22 Frost Nova. Now, Frost Nova is not a particularly powerful ability. It doesn't do a lot of damage. But what it does do is it has a really long chill duration. And with a 25% chance to cast uh, level 22 Frost Nova, I can guarantee you that it will be going off all of the time. And everything around me will basically be chilled permanently. 
essentially all the time. Absolutely no issue whatsoever in terms of, of that. Uh, on top of this, we also get the uh, ITD, which is nice for the basically the trash mobs. And then we get the 30% cold skill damage and the negative 20% enemy cold resistance. Now, the reason why this is so nice is because, as I said earlier, when you lower the resistance of the monster, it increases the chilling and the freezing effects, which is going to help us out a lot. Now, we don't necessarily need the freeze. Um, I think we'll be fine without the freeze, but we definitely want the chilling effects and the slows target by. Uh, all of that is going to be really, really nice for our character. Um, I do need to do a little bit of research here. Uh, we need to pull up Ariat summit and i need the faster bow uh is basically what i'm looking at so let's let's take a look at the bows over on area summit real quick uh we need the elite bows and we need to know which one is the fastest for the druid um so it looks like the druid has fast on the shadow bow hydro bow is a 10 uh, also with fast. Uh, ward bow. There's only a couple bows. Uh, ward bow. Average damage 36.5. We really need something with a high average damage too, which is the Hydra bow. Hmm. It looks like the Shadow bow might be the fastest at a zero with a 37 average damage. So we'd lose a little bit of average damage, but the Shadow Bow definitely seems to be faster. Huh. I think speed is going to be more important for this scenario. So maybe we swap this over to the Shadow Bow. Now, if you've never done this before, if you don't know how to swap over items to different uh, bases, it's really easy. You just take the bow like this, Put it in the pickup slot. Can't be here. It's got to be in the pickup slot. Um, go to right click and then click on general edit of item and extra windows. Go to other, or sorry, not other. My bad. Uh, where is it? Uh, item code. There it is. Item code. Click on this 32 items code. Um, and then look for the base that you want. So, for instance, in this case, the shadow bow. Um, and it's going to warn you that the sockets can be messed up by changing the base, which you're going to uh, say, just say yes, it doesn't matter. Um, and you're going to go down here to the other category, go to the number of sockets, and notice it's messed up our number of sockets to four, to six instead of four. Change that back to four, click save modified item, and now you have a shadow bow, which is exactly what you want. So we've changed it from a hydro bow to a shadow bow. Um, we also want more slows target than this, though. Um, and the way that we're going to get more slows target is actually through our mercenary. So I was, I was considering this one, pondering it. And I think the best way for us to do this is to set up a mercenary that is supporting us in every way. So we're going to use a Lawbringer. And uh, let's see, we don't want a phase blade. Uh, but that's all we have is a phase blade. So we're going to convert this because this is for a mercenary. So same thing. We're going to take this out. We're going to put it into the item slot. Uh, edit the item. And this is what? Three sockets? Yeah, three sockets. All right. So we're going to go back to the base item code. Boop. And we're going to put this into a, a nice base for a mercenary. An ethereal base. Uh, my favorite for the mercenary is the mythical sword. Where are you, mythical sword? There you are. All right, and same as before, you just need to check and make sure the number of sockets is correct, which it's not. Save modified item. Now, in this particular case, we're going to make it ethereal. So we're going to do special functions, and then we're going to do ethereal, make item ethereal. Now, a note on making items ethereal in this way. Um, it does not work. For armor, you have to actually manually edit the value of the armor uh, to be the right amount. It doesn't. It just doesn't work. Uh, so we're gonna do Lawbringer, uh, Mythical Sword, and then we're gonna put F. 
That way it's added into the pack, and when I re-upload the pack, it'll have all the new items on there. All right, now Lawbringer is just one of the two. Uh, the reason why we're using this is for the Decrepify. Uh, we want more crowd control, though. Um, we want even more crowd control than we have right now. So we're going to be putting in another item. And um, I, had to, I was trying to, like, figure out exactly what I wanted for this second item. But I think what it comes down to is a uh, voice of reason. I think voice of reason is probably the best one for this. Um, and the reason is because voice of reason has the ice blast. It also has the frozen orb and it has the negative cold resistance. Um, it also has cold damage on it as well. So basically he's going to be dishing out large amounts of cold, large amounts of, of basically just all the damage that we want. So we're, we should be fine. Um, let's go ahead and convert this one into an ethereal item as well. Uh, doo -doo -doo -doo. Let's just go ahead and make it ethereal before we convert it. Alright, same thing. Mythical sword. And this is a four socket rune word, so we gotta make sure... Oh no, we can't do mythical sword for four socket rune words. So this one has gotta be um, conquest. It's gotta be a conquest sword. Conquest. Where you at? Conquest. There we go. All right, now we check the sockets, make sure it's four, save modified item, close, and we should have a nice ethereal conquest sword with four sockets. Yes, yes, okay, everything's right. Demon crossbow for ultra fast speed. The thing I'm worried about with like demon crossbows and stuff is that they have a cap on their maximum speed. It's a relatively low cap, and I don't want to. I don't want to like mess myself up by capping my damage too low. I'm also already going to have an issue with damage output. So the last thing I want to do is go with like the ultra fast, low damage output stuff. That's why I'm going with the faster bow as opposed to the faster crossbow. Um, now the mercenary, I had some special plans for him. I actually wanted to do some silly things, uh, and I think I'm going to turn him into a powerhouse of. Uh, crowd control. Uh, it's gonna be the one of the weirdest things you guys have ever seen, uh, but it should work. I don't. There's no reason why it shouldn't work. Uh, so first off, we're gonna need a helmet that hardly anyone ever uses, um, and this is the exceptional helmet known as the Dark Sight helmet. Uh, the Dark Sight helmet is a special helmet that has a six percent chance to cast level three dim vision when struck. Now, the reason why we're going to be using this is because I really like the fact that it has the, cannot be, the, uh, sorry, the, the dim vision when struck. And we're going to pair it up with another item that has dim vision when struck, uh, which is basically going to give us the ability to spam dim vision uh, whenever our mercenary gets into trouble. So as our mercenary gets more and more into trouble, he is going to be more and more responsive to spamming blind effects on targets, uh, which... The other armor is Gloom. Uh, Gloom is a pretty ridiculous one also that has the 15% chance to cast level 3 Dim Vision when stuck, struck. Now, the interesting thing about this is because both of them are level 3, and this is important, uh, it's only because they're both level 3. Um, the level 3 Dim Vision percent chance from the armor and the level 3 Dim Vision percent chance from the helmet will actually stack, giving you a cumulative percent chance bonus of, what is that, 21% chance? So it would be a 21% chance any time he is struck to cast a Dim Vision on the target, which means that the monsters will either be Dim Visioned, uh, Decrepified, or, <laughs> or Chilled and Frozen. Uh, this guy should be absolutely ridiculously safe for the most part, except for maybe against bosses. Uh, we'll have to see how well he does against bosses. But with the amount of uh, slows target that we have currently, I can't really imagine the bosses are going to be all that much trouble. All right, so uh, the rest of our equipment. So what are we going to put on our guy? Let's go ahead and give him the basics real quick. So let's grab him a torch. No reason why not. Let's just go ahead and throw on a nice druid torch. Um, we also need to give him an Annie. So let's go ahead and give him an Annie too. 
And um, I'm trying to think what I want to put on him other than this. I've got some general ideas of what I'm looking at, but I'm not entirely sure what I want to throw on him. There is, um, I was considering maybe the rain armor, uh, which would give him the cyclone armor and then, of course, more twisters on striking. They, it's not the same level as the twisters on striking for carrying wind, though, so it's a little bit more difficult to work in. Mm, bear, 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 bear. Let's do some thinking, yeah. I mean, armor-wise, of course, we could always go with just about any of the options, like Chains of Honor certainly wouldn't be terrible. Uh, Bramble's terrible because, obviously, things are going to have a hard time even hitting us. Um, we don't really want to use Gloom because we're already using Double Gloom on the Mercenary, so that's not really important. Hmm. I have a feeling we are going to have some resistance issues um, with the way that this particular build works because obviously we're not using a, a shield and uh, we're not getting any resistances from our weapon. And then on top of that, we're also not really getting a huge amount of resistances from our rings. We are getting the, the 55 and 55% 55 poison resistance, so our poison is going to be off the hook. Ridiculous. But other than that, uh, we probably are going to need some resistances as well. Um, let's do some research. So let's pull up some stuff on Amazon Basin. First off, let's take a look at Slow's target pieces of equipment. Uh, first off, I know for a fact that um, we have Arachnid's Mesh could be an option. Uh, there's Black Horn's Face, which is also an option. Not really a good one, but it's an option. And most of these are weapons, so it doesn't really help us out that much. Shield. Uh, Nosferatu's has 10% on it. That's interesting. Nosferatu's Coil. Do we need the uh, IAS, though? Let's Let's do some calculations. All right, let's do some quick calculations and see if we need a more increased attack speed or not. All right, so where form uh, werewolf uh, skill is most likely going to be fury. Uh, weapon is going to be a shadow bow. Uh, we do, 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 do. I mean, I'm assuming we're going to have at least like Let's say at least like level 15 werewolf, which isn't really out of the question. And it looks like for relatively small amounts of IAS, we can still hit our breakpoints. I mean, 133 is going to be difficult, but... Uh, I mean, assuming we had 20 on the gloves... 10 on the belt. Maybe we threw in a High Lords. I mean, that's 20, 30, 40, 50. That's like 50% IAS right there. Mm -hmm. I mean, we could definitely at least make it to the 5, 4, 6. Making it to the 5, 3, 6 or the 4, 3, 6 would definitely be even better. Hmm. Hmm. Um, Zombaz. Uh, the Wind Druid is mostly physical, not cold. Uh, Hurricane is physical slash cold. Tornado is physical. Twister is physical. Um, so you're you're like seventy five percent physical damage, Zombaz. So I don't really think going with Doom is really the and like Nightwings and all that is really the best thing for that particular class. Um, what Hustle Swap? So level one burst of speed. 
which brings us to only 65% required. It's actually not too bad. 65% is doable. Um, let's take a look at our tree here and see. So if we went with Nas coil. Oh my god, I don't want it. Did, what do you. Oh, okay. I see what's going on. Right click, import. All right, so Nas coil is 10%. It also has our slows target on it, which is what we want. So that gives us a little bit more on the on the slows target. We also have way too much life leech, but whatever. I guess we're definitely going to survive. Um, if we get 20% from the gloves, which I'm trying to think exactly what gloves we would actually want to put on this character, but there's plenty of gloves that have IAS on them. Um, we could even just potentially go with a nice pair of bloods. I don't, I don't see any problem with bloods either. Um, or we could go with just, you know, we could go with a generic pair of gloves too. So, um, if you wanted to just go with say like laying of hands, uh, for instance, which I can't remember if that's the right ones. No, that's Magnus skins. Anyways, I always mix up these two sets: Orphans Call and um, the Disciple. That's what it is, the Disciple. Uh, which it's not exactly a terrible idea. Um, it gives us a huge amount of fire resistance too, which is not awful. What's a lockdown druid? A lockdown druid. It's where you lock down everything. Uh, boot wise, I mean, honestly, for melee classes, it feels like there's really nothing better than the gore riders. Uh, there's very few situations where I feel like the gore riders aren't like one of the optimal choices. I mean, nothing else really comes close. Just thinking off the top of my head, looking at some of the other options, but even like a very nice crafted pair of boots. Uh, it's hard to beat the Gore Riders. All right. Uh, oh, I forgot to give him stat points. That would have been that would have been embarrassing. Let me uh, let me run those real quick before I forget. Holy Jesus! Why you look so fat? Calculator. Ninety four <laughs> times. 5 plus 15 equals so 485. Uh, I probably won't be using Tornado Stun. Twister. Twister Stun. It's the Twister Stun that has those. Tornado doesn't have any, any stun attached to it. We're also probably not going to be using Tornado at all on this build. Uh, I don't think so anyway. Um, okay, so High Lords. Let's go ahead and grab a High Lords and throw this in here for the IAS. So Amulets, High Lords. We may have issues with attack rating, but we're going to have to figure that out. I'm blind. Hmm. Hmm. I mean, our charm slots are free. So there is that. So we have we have plenty of room for charms. We could maybe solve our attack rating issues there, and we'll, and we'll figure out what do we want to do with that. The um, helmet slot. What do we want for our beautiful helmet slot? Now, there's obviously one of the best helmets for the druid is the Jalals, but I wanted to take a look at some other options. Mm -hmm. I mean, most of these don't really have crowd control effects on them. Like, nothing in this list, for the most part, has any kind of crowd control effect on it. Um, we've already used Dark Side Helmet in the Mercenary, so that's not really uh, a good one either. I mean, meh. Meh, 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 meh. Um, we can take a look at the Rune Words, but I don't think there's any really good crowd control Rune Words either, besides Delirium. The problem with Delirium is it requires us to get hit, and I don't really think that's going to happen very often. Yeah, I just don't think any of these are really going to be all that amazing. I mean, Dream is kind of interesting from the Confuse perspective without having to worry about the the Mind Blast. Um, 
Hmm. It's windstruck, though, and it's just not going to happen very often with the way my character set up. And other than that, it really doesn't have a whole lot of nothing else to offer this build, so it's not really going to be worthwhile. Uh, so we pretty much we pretty much just fall back on Jalal's, um, unless we were to make a really nice, uh, like the new rune word, which is what the um, it's not even in. I don't even think I have it in here. The uh, the metamorphosis. I'm trying to think of like the sets too, but I don't think any of the sets have any good effects on them either. Uh, no, no, no. Nah. No, no. There is a the weaken proc on that, but weaken's not really all that useful. Um, of course, we got the really nice crushing blow, open wounds, deadly strike from like a, uh, you know, like a G face, which isn't terrible. Uh, but Metamorphosis is kind of like a G-Phase, which is also a thing. I think uh, Jalal's is probably the best bet for this, so let's just go ahead and grab our, our Jalal's. Our doo-doo, our doo-doo Jalal's. We'll even throw an upped one on there for the increased defense. Um, and then for the armor, I think we're going to be running into resistance issues. So it's either going to be rain... I was thinking about rain for the additional twister procs, but I'm not really sure we're going to need it running two carrion winds. Um, Rosie, I'm literally playing Diablo right now. <laughs> oh, man. Um, bum, 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 bum. I'm not sure what to do for this weapon, this, uh, this freaking armor slot. I mean, I could go the uh, the expensive route, and I could just slap a, I could just slap a, uh, you know, the, the 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 likely answer, which is the beautiful, beautiful uh, chains of honor. But you know, honestly, rain might still be the best choice. Like uh, rain in a nice arcane plate. I mean, rain does have. Plus two druid skills. It also has the 5% chance to cast level 15 with Twister on striking. And it also has the free cyclone armor, which is certainly not terrible. Yes, I don't really get a large amount of um, resistances from it. You know. But I'm not really sure it's going to be that big of a deal. Like, I don't I don't know. I'm getting, uh, what? What is it? 30% uh, lightning here. I'm getting the all res 30 here. I also have another 30% lightning here. I'm getting like a hundred, what is that? 110% um, resistances for poison there. 50% fire there. Um, I don't know. We could always throw a, we could throw a COH in the stash uh, just to see. Like if it's really, if it's really that bad when we hop into the game. We'll take a, you know, we'll, we'll throw the COH on there and we'll play around with it. Um, swappies. We definitely need a hustle. Um, I'm thinking the hustle for the burst of speed. So let's go ahead and throw a hustle in here. Uh, I only have a hustle and a map bow. Why do I only have hustle and a map bow? That's okay, we can fix it. All right, let's go ahead and change this to... It really doesn't matter what we change it to, just something fast. I mean, in this particular case, I could put it in a, like a a demon crossbow for all that matters, or, you know, just to keep things exactly the same so that I don't have to worry about any stat differences between my two items or speed differences between my two items. I could just put it in a shadow bow. I mean... Why not? And hustle is what? Uh, three sockets. So let's make sure we're still at three. And throw the hustle bow in there. Now we've got a hustle and we've got an ice. We got the Jalal's. 
All right. Um, what do we want in our equipment? Uh, we only really have one socket to use, which is the Jalals. So we probably want an IAS jewel so we can hit our breakpoint. Because we're sitting at, what, 10, 20, uh, 30, 40. And then 55 with this. So that would be 55% increased. There's also 20 on the bow. That might just put us over. So that might be exactly what we need. So 55, 65. Yeah. In fact, we might even be able to get away with losing 10% attack speed somewhere. We might not even need the IAS jewel. Uh, treachery won't work for this build at all because with the amount of crowd control that I'm going to be laying down, I don't think you guys understand. When I call this the lockdown character, okay, the monsters are probably not going to hit me. Like, ever. I mean, if they do, lucky. But for the most part, I really doubt I'll even be hit enough to ever proc treachery. I, might, I would have to go stand and fire, I think, to get treachery to proc. Ah, uh, yes, the guy that perfected my necromancer. <laughs> uh, I didn't have anybody ever make me so angry. A rash. I, I told that guy I had to stop talking to him because I was gonna. I, I was just I was just getting irrationally angry, and I was gonna say something really mean and hurtful, and I didn't want to do that. So, I told him I just had to stop. All right, so what charms do we want for this particular character? I'm thinking that we want damage, and we want AR, so we're probably going to go with max damage AR charms. I think that's probably our best bet. Um, I don't really think there's another. There's a lot, lot of other choices for this. It's pretty much just max damage ARs. So let's go ahead and reach into the, the ether, pull out some of our max damage AR charms, So, Grand Charms, uh, Sharp Charms. No, those are Large Charms. We want the Grand Charms. Why are the Large Charms in the Grand Charms? Eh. This is not right. This is not right. These are small. We don't need the HP because we're a Druid. Hmm. We really need the more AR. Isn't the aren't the larges more AR? I can't remember actually. I could have sworn the larges were actually more AR than the uh Oh no, that's a grand. 129 attack rating, 32 life. Okay, that's not what we're looking for. Sharp large germ of balance. Why are these called large germs? What the hell did I do? Oh. Broke the game. That's what I did. Do I really not have the uh, the larger charms in here? Uh, 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 hold on. Let me go back. Do, 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 sets, ethereal, socket bases, sunder charms. Uh, we actually do want a sunder charm. But those are characters, not actual charms. Do I really not have those particular charms? It's rude. It's rude of me not to have those particular charms in my in my repertoire. And these are all smalls. No, there's larges in here too. Medium. Oh, I see what's going on. Whoever whoever wrote the uh, wording for these charms used large for grand medium for large and small for small i didn't i didn't do that i might have to go through the process of uh of rewording those that's terrible wording yeah high attack rating charms are actually pretty easy to get <coughs> Mm. Mm -mm. My poodoo. Oh, 
Okay, that's kind of what I was looking for. So these are faster hit recoveries. Um, these will work for right now. There's no reason why I can't just use these. Um, and then I actually also want some cold damage. So adding in cold damage will also increase the duration of my chilling effects. So I kind of want to stack on a little bit of cold damage too. And uh, let's see here. I think there's some cold damage charms in here. Uh, really, it would just be the highest cold damage I could get at that particular time, but it really doesn't matter. Let's just go ahead and stack on as much cold damage as we can. Uh, this way, we have more cold damage added into the pot and more duration on that cold damage, which is what we're looking for. And uh, and then also, I'm thinking from a perspective... Let's see here. Unique jewels... Uh, I was highly thinking about a cold facet for this build, uh, mainly just to increase my my uh, crowd control effects even more. So we're going to go ahead and throw that into Jalal's main, and um, I think that pretty much does it. Do I need anything? Uh, yeah, I need a socket for the dark side bassinet helm. Um, not really sure what I want to do for that one. He doesn't really have a lot of physical damage. He really just needs to attack fast. I think maybe an IAS jewel is probably my best bet. Do I have slow, he asks. Do I have slow? <laughs> yes. Yes, I do. Yeah. <coughs> yes, 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 I do. All right, now's the moment of truth. Let's go ahead and pull this character over into the other realm. Let's fix my uh, resolution, too, while we're at it here. Back to the big boy resolution. All right, so we're going to copy him over, and then we're going to boot up the game, and we should have a complete character. We just need to work on his skills um, and get everything set up so that he actually functions. Um, and then we're going to test out some various methods of getting this character to work. Once we've tested everything out, we will uh, know pretty much how we want to have this guy set up. All right, let me use my special launching link. It's the one that allows me to respect my characters. And also inconveniently always opens on the wrong monitor for some reason. The regular game always opens on the right monitor. The one with the special link that allows me to respect my characters whenever I want to always opens on the wrong monitor. I gotta switch it. All right, GGM Lockdown is born. Let's hop in. Let's see what his resistances are without his Chains of Honor and whether or not we need to put that on. So he is sitting at some very funky resistances, which is pretty much what I expected. So he currently has negative 30 cold, positive 20 fire, 5 lightning, and he's like way overcapped on poison. <laughs> All right, we're not actually wearing a lot of our equipment yet, so let's go ahead and put in the stats that we need. Uh, looks like bare minimum we need 103, 103. Um, and we're going to min-max this guy, because I don't think there's any reason for me to worry about strength requirements for him, so let's just go ahead and just min it. Actually, we know no, no. We need one eighteen minimum for the for the dream spirit. My bad. All right, and that immediately gives us one thirty eight because, of course, the dream spirit has its own bonus to strength on it, which is, which is nice. I mean, honestly, I like having the more defense over the less requirements, so that's why we upgraded it. Uh, we need one hundred and eighty eight dexterity. That's going to help out our AR tremendously. 
Um, and then from there, we can pretty much just stack vitality. Uh, but let's see how much AR we have once we get everything set up before we decide whether or not we want to go that route. Uh, resistances are starting to look a lot better without the Chains of Honor. So we now have 65 Lightning, 50 Fire, 75 Poison, and 0% Cold. Um, so we could potentially augment this build with some Cold Resistance Charms. Um, it's 0%, so we would need like 7... 11% charms, uh, so 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. So we could easily cap out the cold res without Chains of Honor. Not that difficult. Good to see you. Alright, um, so skills. This is the fun part. So how do we set up our character for skills? Well, first off, we're going to be using the Carrion Winds to provide ourselves with the additional um, Twister procs. Okay, this is a big part of our build, and we want those Twisters to come out. Now, the Twisters are going to come out with at, at their current stun length duration, which is at zero points, we get 0 0.4 second micro stun. So a 0.4% micro-stun or, or micro-stun is not really all that amazing. However, you can use Arctic Blast to increase the stun length duration of Twister, which is rather interesting, which causes us to have a pretty nice stun length on our Twisters. Now, I'm highly considering dumping points into Arctic Blast, but... For right now, we want Hurricane. That's going to be part of our build um, to uh, add in even more crowd control. So let's just go ahead and point down to Hurricane. That's going to be part of the build. We want we want that. In fact, let me go ahead and move myself over to the other side so you guys can see the skills better because I, I know that my big, fat, fat, ugly face is in the way. My big, old ugly butt. All right, here, let me flip myself around. Watch this. Watch this magic, boys. Watch the magic. Haha, -ha. see, look. You can't even tell that I flipped myself around, except for the the wording on my on my shirt is backwards. See it? No, it doesn't say it doesn't say chinchillin anymore. Now it says nil nilic chicken I don't I don't even know how to pronounce that backwards. Grats, Rosie. You're on your way to clear an act two. Uh let's go get our mercenary too while we're at it. Let's go let's go get him set up. So we need to go to Act 5. Uh, we need a Frenzy Merc. A uh, Hailful Dane. What the hell? Heath Heatholath. Unferth. Al Alban. Uh, why are they like every single one is a two-handed variant? Look at this. Two-handed, 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 two-handed. Two -handed. I want I want a cool name on my my frenzy druid. Afternoon. Uh Yadgils, Edgils, Yadgils. Tostig. Ha ha ha. Torkel. Oh man, I want Torkel, but it's not a frenzy. No, I want Torkel. Toastig, Toastig and Torkel. The name doesn't matter all that much. It matters to me. I mean, um, nothing. I'll put that to good use. I'll put that to good use. Okay, there's the Chains of Honor, just in case. We don't care about that. Let's go ahead and give him his equipment. So the mercenary is going to be using a Lawbringer, which is going to give him Decrypify procs. Um, he's also going to obviously have, uh, well, the slain monsters rest in peace too, which is kind of nice for him to lock down the monsters for me that way, because I don't care about the corpses. Um, he's going to be using Gloom and Darkseid Bassinet Helm. The reason why he's going to be using this two-piece combo is for the, the really high chance to cast Dim Vision when struck. So if he ever gets into trouble, is attacked by ranged monsters, whatever's going on, if they're outside the realm of my freezing, which is really going to be the only time this comes in handy, but if they're outside the realm of my freezing, they will be blind. Um, then he's also going to be using Voice of Reason, which is going to give the Frozen Orb and the Ice Blast on striking. 
uh, as well as a little bit of negative res so his chill effects last longer. And um, it should work out pretty nicely for him. I mean, he's not really going to do a lot of physical damage, but he'll do a lot of everything else. Uh, as you can see, he's got capped out reses in hell, so he's fine. Gloom has a nice all 40, 45 all res on it, which caps him out just fine for resistances. Uh, interesting story about that happy rogue. Most of the names for mercenaries are actually names of family members or employees who worked at Blizzard North at that particular time. It might sound weird, but it's the truth. It's the truth. Alright, um... We definitely want to shapeshift, obviously. Uh, so let's go ahead and 1.1 wonder the entire shapeshifting tree here. We want Fury. That's going to be our main attack. Oh, Darkseid Bassinet Helm also has Cannot Be Frozen, so it really doesn't matter. He's got two Cannot Be Frozens on at the same time. I'm not really too worried about it. Um, I, I, I'm really making the choices of these pieces of equipment for other reasons besides, obviously, that particular reason. But, yeah, it's nice, though. Uh, okay, so we've one point wondered the entire tree here. Um, another thing that I really wanted to get my hands on was ravens uh, for this particular build, so I'm going to have to summon them a lot. Uh, I was thinking about actually dropping some points into the ravens specifically for the purpose of just you know, not having to summon them a lot. I don't really care about the damage. I just want them to be up practically all the time. So I don't really, I'm not really sure. Um, I do think we're going to have um, issues with attack rating. So we're probably going to go hard of the Wolverine uh, specifically for the attack rating on that. Um, so in this particular case, uh, let's see here. And something like that. Not in town. Mm, that cast speed too. All right. Now the reason why we're going with ravens is to double down on the blinding effect. Um, so ravens are, of course, they are a blinding monster. They make them blind. A the monster blind. That's what they're good at. They're, they're making things blind. It, 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 it. Uh, so we got attack rating from the Horde of Wolverine. We've got the blind from the ravens. I kind of considered maybe even running the Spirit Wolves just so I'd have some cold in here as well, but uh, I think it's just spreading my points a little bit too thin at this point. Now, Twister gets a 10% or 20% duration bonus for the stun per points in our Arctic Blast, which kind of has me a little interested in putting some points in there. Uh, we also get the duration increase from Hurricane for Cyclone Armor, so we're probably going to dump points in the Cyclone Armor as well, uh, for this, for specifically for this reason. Um, we also need our attack speed, though. So... Trying to think here. We need the attack rating, so we're most likely going to have to dump points into, at very least, the Werewolf and Fury which will bring our attack rating up to a pretty nice number. Uh, we need to actually transform to see that number, though, which is which is an issue. Uh, let's go ahead and put this on, like, F5. All right, so we're currently at 12,765 attack rating with Fury. I think that's plenty. I think we're actually well within the... The number that we need to be a successful draw dad. Of course, half that is due to the 66 attack rating uh, sharp charms here, which is giving us a large amount of that attack rating. Each one of these is giving us about, like, I think it's like 500 per charm. Yeah, just taking off the charms brings us down to around 8,900. So it looks honestly like we're in a really good shape. I, I would like to see it a little higher, so let's push our dexterity a little bit higher. Uh, let's push it to... Oh, rats on the death web. Let's push it to 15k. That's a really nice number, and then let's just dump everything left into vitality. 
Um, that brings us up to a nice 1500 HP. That's We shouldn't really have to worry about survivability for this anyway. Um, we still got, what, 54 skill points left? What do we do with our remaining skill points? Really thinking about Hurricane. Just kind of capping this out. Capping out Cyclone Armor. Uh, what do we do? Like 19 there. 19 there. That gives us... Still pretty decent amount left to maybe drop into Arctic Blast. Hmm. Alright, let's give it a try. Let's go ahead and drop 19 into Hurricane. Uh, we'll drop 19 into Cyclone Armor. Leaves us with 16 left. And we could take those 16 and throw them into Arctic Blast to increase the stun duration on Twister. Or we could take the 16 and throw them into Twister to increase the damage of Twister itself. I mean, we are going to be popping off Twisters like crazy, so it wouldn't exactly be terrible to have some Twisters that actually did damage. Or we could split the difference between the two. Increasing Twister would also technically increase our hurricane damage, which is also isn't terrible. Um, hmm. Hmm, 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 I think that's just the only choice. We go with the stun duration so that we have more stuns. Now our stun duration is 1.7 seconds per twister, uh, which 1.7 seconds is a pretty long time per twister. So that should give us some pretty crazy levels of crowd control. Now uh, let's go ahead and grab some potions. Uh, let me put Hurricane on the right click here. No, you don't proc your current skill level Twister, but you do get the synergies from the Twister. That's kind of the whole thing. So you'll still get the synergy damage uh, bonus increases from the alternative skills. So, for instance, Twister has a synergy with Hurricane. So when you build Hurricane, you get the bonus um, from those, which is nice. So I guess to build the damage of Twister, I would have to build Tornado, which I really don't want to do. The extra stun length duration sounds like it's more fun anyway. Oh, I hate how it freaking detransforms you. Like right when you go to a new zone. Alright, I think there's something I missed. What did I miss? I missed something. Okay, all my points are in. Skill points are in. What am I missing? I'm missing something. I know I'm missing something. Cold Sunder. I'm missing my Cold Sunder. That's right. I need the Cold Sunder to make this build really, really shine. So we gotta go steal a Cold Sunder from somebody. That's what we gotta do. Uh, who has a Cold Sunder? Probably this guy named Holy Cold. I bet you he has a Cold Sunder. <laughs> Stealing cold sunners. Now you might be asking why the cold sunder when we're not doing a particularly large amount of cold damage, and the answer is as well, we're a lockdown character, and if you can break the immunity of a monster, you can remove essentially any kind of resistance to freezing effects or chilling effects. So the entire goal of that is to allow you to bypass any monster that's cold immune and to chill them or freeze them anyway, uh, which is going to happen. It's going to happen a lot. We're going to be chilling and freezing lots of monsters. <coughs> All right, so let's get our pre-buff running. We need our pre-buff. I don't 
see the pre-buff around my feet. Let's just keep going until we see it. I'm not even on Fury. Hold on. There we go. There we go. Okay, now we have our pre-buff. Let's get our hurricane up and running. Let's get our little dude janks. <laughs> Lockdown it is. I didn't even get everything cast here. Hold on, let me get my ravens up, get my wolverine. Alright, let's go. <laughs> and the lockdown druid is born. Oh, no. They got my heart of the war. The little punk. I need cannot be frozen. Oh no. Do I though? Do I really? Do I really though? I don't think anything can even hit me for the most part. It cannot hit me. Monsters cannot, they cannot hit me. Ah, uh, fifteen thousand eight hundred and seventy. That's pretty good. Pretty good level. Oh, they got me. They got me, Captain. I chilled it, dude. They got me. They got me. Yeah, I don't have any. Cannot be frozen. Hmm. Cham the helmet. Cham the helmet. Full speed ahead. Cham the helmet. Let's go somewhere with, uh, I don't know. Let's go to Worldstone and die from the, from the snakes. That <laughs> siege crossbow. Is that Langerbriser? What the hell is that? That's Langerbriser, right? <laughs> I tell you, it's a fun character. What's my damage at? Like 3k? It's not like terrible, terrible. What is a doojank? Ah, uh, he asked the question. I have a whole video on what doojanks are. <coughs> Long story short, a doojank is a contextual word that basically derives its meaning from the context of the sentence. Uh, it's a word that has no meaning unless the context of the sentence gives it meaning. In other words, if I were to say, um, I was driving my doojank today and it broke down. Well, I mean, driving my doojank could respond to a couple different things, you know, like, but you usually say riding a bike, not driving a bike, right? Or you say riding a motorcycle, not driving a motorcycle. So driving a car, or driving a truck, or driving a whatever, right? So, like, doojank then becomes a representation of a word for a vehicle, and so forth and so on. Oh, my God. 
Those guys are immune to physical. Oh, they die real fast. Lockdown mode activate. Lockdown mode activate. Yeah, lockdown mode activate. Hold on. My tornado wasn't on. Those guys are immune to physical, and that is a little painful. A little painful, and they got my Merc. Right, hold on, let's try this. Shing, shing. Let me get my little Dujanks back up. <laughs> Rude. Of course, most characters can't stand there and take that damage. Well, most characters can't. I mean, that's... That's not even uh, just this character specifically. That's pretty much any character that tries to go in there and take on that many Hell Temptresses getting hit by that much damage all at one time. Not to mention a champion pack of them. I'm actually surprised that he stays along as li alive as long as he does, to be perfectly honest. So many immune to physicals anyway. My poor little boy, he can't handle it. He can't handle it. Hmm. I wonder if the inclusion of a physical sunder would be nice in this build. Interesting to consider. Also, what player count are we on? I didn't even check. I think we're on P7, aren't we? Because I was doing my testing on P7. Oh, I'm on P3. Okay. So that's P. We've been testing this on P3 the entire time. Let's bump these rookie numbers up to P8 real quick, and let's see. My hunch is is that my damage is going to be a little low, and that um, I might not be able to handle P8 as well because of the low damage output. But it'll be a good way to test our crowd control and see how well my crowd control works. Oh, nice. Grant's happy, Rogue. Let's grab our Merka Nurka Nurka Nary. Yes, warrior. Resummon. Yum. Alright, let's go somewhere fun. Um, hmm. Let's go to Canyon of Magi. Remember, this is uh, P8 Canyon of the Magi. <coughs> Crushers have a pretty large amount of HP, so that was interesting. I mean, I didn't have any issue with them, but it did take me a little bit of time. Decrepify from the Merc is doing nicely. Blinds from the Merc are doing nicely. And the Ravens. Locking down pretty much anything that's nearby. Most of the stuff is getting shattered, but not all of it. If I added some freezes targeted to the build, that can be interesting. But I'm kind of surprised there was no freezes target on the ice. Hurricane's down. I gotta remember to keep casting my hurricane. It's part of my build.
go inside one of the tombs. And I got chilled. Trying to reprock my, uh, my burst of speed. Honestly, I'm still attacking pretty fast, even chilled. Which is actually kind of cool. The addition of the Sanctuary's knockback against Undead is also another layer of crowd control. It's actually pretty crazy. So between the freezing, the, the chilling effect, the slows target, and the knockback, which is constantly being applied to the Undead, Back up. Let's throw in a couple, um, let's throw in some other abilities too. Hold on. <coughs> I am a werewolf after all. Let's throw in uh, Fury as well. Let me get that set up. Okay, so let's put uh, Barrel Ridge on Z. on PN, but I know at no point am I ever really feeling like I'm in danger, to be perfectly honest. The slows target combined with the chilling effects, combined with the decrepify, the stuns, and everything else that's going on, I feel like most of the time I'm fine. That uh, negative 70% cold res when I killed that elite, that frost nova almost killed me though. So I think I might need a little bit more resistances. Of course, I could have countered that by having my Cyclone armor up. Probably would have completely eaten it at 955 absorption. I'm kind of sad that I'm not shattering every move. Put an ice blink on this character so I can really shatter stuff. I mean, PA regular skeletons I'm definitely not having any issue with. Build that Feral Rage up. think if more physical damage would be an answer to this problem or like damage output I'm not really worried about my survivability and the crowd control is working great but damage output I guess I could probably increase in some ways I was even thinking maybe a G face might be a better choice just for the extra crushing blow and the extra deadly strength There's also another interesting way that I could go with this, which might be the better way. 
So let's let's do a quick respec real quick, and let's test a second potential way of going. So uh, we have all these twisters that are coming out, and they're nice. And the hurricane is interesting, but it doesn't really do a lot of damage. So another interesting way that we could potentially take this is instead of going full shape-shifting, we could divert some of these shape-shifting points toward this tree to increase the hurricane damage and inc increase the twister damage, um, which uh, it would take a considerable number of points to achieve that, but um, it would kind of turn it into basically like the Hurricane Gilbert sort of character, which is where he has massive amounts of you know, like he's got his, his his really high level hurricane, his twisters are coming out actually dishing out damage, so forth and so on. Um, hmm. I mean, making a small change like that wouldn't necessarily remove like the spirit of the build. Let's get a quick look. We haven't seen it on players one yet, so let's get, let's see what it's like on players one, because uh, we have yet we have yet to see the P one speed of this particular character. We've seen P3 and we've seen P8 and we have not seen P1. Let's go test P1. Get some procs too while we're at it. Get our uh, get our dujink running. Alright, there we go. So, I mean, P1 and P3 we handled just fine. P, P8, obviously, it's a little bit of a struggle, but I, we could potentially increase our damage output. That's not really too big of an issue. I tell you what, though, we certainly have created a, a absolutely ridiculous lockdown type character. So resistances are definitely uh, still an issue. They're an issue. I mean, let me put COH on in place of the um, the rain. I'm not entirely sure the rain is really all that necessary. Um, it's okay, I guess. A COH I think is definitely going to be better, considering we're at negative 70% cold res. It'll help us out tremendously in that regard. I mean, that brings us up to cap on all resistances and negative 5 on cold, which we could still very easily overcome. <coughs> God, we must be like ridiculously overcapped on poison too. Yeah, 275. Oof. I, I want to test this against a boss. Something a little bit more nasty. Let's go, um. Let's just go clear chaos real quick and we'll have fun with that. That would grief work. Grief would completely ruin most of the, the crowd control that I'm obtaining for the build. Soren. The goal of the build is to basically lock down all targets with crowd control effects um, to ridiculous standards. Uh, one of the ways that we're obtaining those crowd control effects is number one, the frost nova procs, which is hitting everything nearby. The holy freeze, which slows everything down. We also have slows target on our equipment, which adds into that total. And then the decrepify, which also slows the targets down as well, which is pretty freaking neat. 
So in total, we have so many slowdown and lockdown effects just going on on a regular basis that most monsters can't really do much of anything, including stuns, slows, chills, blinds, the, you name it. We've literally got, like, everything running at this particular moment. Taking off the grief would remove the Holy Freeze. It would also remove the Frost Nova procs. And, um... Hurricane running again. Uh, I'm not really entirely sure it's a good move for the way that we have this build structured. I do need some cannot be frozen. I'll tell you what, I've never felt safer on a character. The majority of the time, the monsters are so locked down, they really can't do anything to you. Stuns, slows, chills, blinds, like the whole nine yards. The only thing that's unfortunate is that the ravens don't really last very long. So, uh, more points in the ravens would be nice. Most of these monsters don't even last like one or two hits before they go down. You see these monsters just like struggling to even do anything like most of the time they don't even get a swing on me like and if they do get a swing it's a really slow swing I can barely even like engage in 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 the process of hitting me let alone thinking about hitting me the Ravens are working pretty good to blind targets as well which is certainly not not bad Physically immune and lightning immune. Still dead. I'm gonna make sure I'm using my tornado. Why my hurricane? I keep forgetting to use my hurricane. It lasts for what is it? Uh, 50 seconds? That's not exactly the most amazing. monsters with the addition of the sanctuary into the build I don't even think they can do anything like they legit can't do anything they keep getting knocked back they get slowed down they try and do something like make an attack they can't make the attack the freaking monsters are just like stuck in a permanent loop of getting knocked back and and being unable to do anything I think the only ones that can do anything are the casters, because the casters aren't affected by the slows target by, but... God, it's so slow casting the, the ravens, though. be a real test in factor of souls he's extra fast and he swarms right so let's we'll go in there and we'll let him swarm us i think that's a good test we'll get everything up before we before we spawn him to give ourselves at least a fair chance
Where's my mana go? Between the chilling effects, the blinding effects, the the slows, the whole nine yards, that, that was, they were completely locked down. That was hilarious. You're done with Diablo 2? Do I want your pal? I don't know. Damn. Killed my mercenary. Little. I'm not really a Hammerton character. I mean, we could give it away to someone in the kinship, I guess. Hello. I mean, if you know somebody who wants to build a Hammerton, I mean, that's up to you. You could always just uh, bequeath your items unto someone else. Bequeath. How am I getting Dim Vision? Two different ways. The Ravens are doing it, and also the Mercenary is doing it. Uh, the Mercenary has a Dim Vision proc when struck. So whenever he is struck, uh, he has a 15% chance on there, and he has an 8-6% chance there. So he basically has two separate percent chances to cause Dim Vision whenever he gets hit. Uh, so if he gets, in, he, if he gets into trouble, um, he's basically got, what is that, a 15? Uh, so 21% chance to cast level 3 Dim Vision. Because they're the same level, they actually do stack, which is kind of neat. Um, it's, a, it's a, it's a lot. It's a lot of dude jacks, that's for sure. Defense on that armor is actually kind of high. You might not actually be getting hit. But the interesting thing is, is it also procs on spells and things like that, which makes it more useful than it seems. So when you're like down here and you're fighting, say, I don't know, like Gloms, as an example. Um, what you'll notice is, is that the Gloams will start to get Dim Vision. Because as they strike him, uh, the Dim Vision will spawn directly on them. So it's, it's a very useful for locking down ranged targets. Because every, everything that attacks him is going to constantly get blinded. Um, and then, of course, the Ravens are also blinding things, too. Which is also not terrible. It's nice to have the Ravens also doing, doing putting in some work. And it just helps lock stuff down even more. Um, because certain monsters are immune to the effects of slowing, it's actually kind of nice to have an additional way to lock them down. It helps a lot versus casters, too. So whenever you get into a situation where you have a large number of casters, you'll notice that the casters will constantly be blinded on a regular basis. Um, that's the reason why I set him up that way. So basically, he just blinds everything that's a caster. Anything that's going to attack him, that's a gloam, a mage, uh, archers, um, anything that's ranged that hits him will get blinded on a regular basis. Um, and it's extremely helpful. Um, as you can clearly see, once the, once the gloams are blinded, they're pretty much just useless. Um, and I can pretty much just let him go in there by himself for the most part, and uh, he'll start blinding everything. I can, of course, keep my ravens up, though, to help him so that he has additional blinding from the ravens. I mean, the general gist of this character was to lock down everything, and it wouldn't be a lockdown character if there were certain monsters that could potentially escape the lockdown effect. And uh, so we don't want anything to be able to escape the lockdown effect. The radius of my hurricane isn't particularly large. My holy freezer doesn't cover the entire screen. Um, the ravens can go around and, and blind everything themselves. But then on top of that, anything that hits the mercenary can also be blinded in that way, which is pretty nice. So you get like the additional blindings 
going uh, going on constantly. I mean, I can just let him go up there and fight by himself, and he'll start blinding stuff. Like you see, half the freaking room is blind now. So, what can I what can I uh, take from this character so far? Well, does the character work? Yes. Um, as you can clearly see by this entire pack of gloves right here, they just got absolutely blinded into oblivion. And I'm still going to end up getting murdered here, though, because that's a lot of freaking poison in that room. That is a lot of poison. Let me get some of these potions up here real quick. My boy's about to die from poison. Thanks. Thanks. I don't even know how, though. I got like 8 trillion percent poison mm -hmm. resistance. All right, let's go back and do it again. Get my ravens up. We're going to dive right in. Let's go. Come on. We can do this. We can do this. Let's get the poison guys down. I think they're the ones that were killing me a lot faster than everything else. A good crit poison will freaking wreck you. Give me all that potion. Oh, run walk speed, I've got that solved as well. Like, I know I'm, like, permanently chilled because I don't have Cannot Be Frozen at the moment. I'm thinking about maybe, like, a Cham Rune in the helmet or something might work wonders there. But um, one of the easiest ways to deal with the whole slow down on this particular character is just use this. It works really well. Uh, once you use this, you can go over here, you can proc stuff. Let me go ahead and proc my burst of speed. Uh, so as you can clearly see here, you see that entire pack just got blinded? Now, Death Lords can't be slowed and they can't be chilled, uh, which is why I have the stuns. So when it comes to the Death Lords, I'm going to have to rely pretty much on the stuns to do the work for me. Let's see if we can find another nice Death Lord pack. As you can see, I've got the nice 1.7 second stuns going on, which is really what I'm kind of relying on. Oh, of course I down transform. That is a really bad time to down transform there. Uh, but as you can see, most of the time they stay stunned. That 1.7 second stun from the twister is extremely useful for fighting pretty much anything. Even if the monster's not capable of being uh, frozen. And, and you can see, I kind of thought of everything. Like, I'm like, okay, well, the, the gloms and stuff, they're not going to be, you know, freezable. The death lords and stuff are not going to be freezable. What about all the range monsters that are constantly going to be shooting me on a regular basis? We need a way to deal with those guys. Um, and, and I kind of, like, worked out a method for locking down just about any type of monster within the game. Which is pretty sweet. And good luck running away from me. What's up, Stormcaster? I need a little, little movement speed. Oh, I only got one hit off. Dang it. My damage is enough with this bow. It's a little it's a little light, Duck Llama. It's a little light. I'm at uh, 932 to 3095 damage with the bow. It's a little light. I'd like more. Get our nice little run walk bonus going. Oh, look at this cute little pack of little soul killers. Oh, look at these little soul killers. They're so cute. Die. Uh, the problem with, uh, with crossbows is they have a relatively low speed cap. So, um, I, don't, I don't know. Let me let me write this down because I've I've been suggested the crossbows by a lot of people. Let me let me kind of explain this to you guys so that you understand. So, bows are slower with a higher max speed. X bows are slower, or sorry, are faster with a lower max speed, uh, which means that. 
even though crossbows are faster, they are slower overall because they can only reach a lower maximum IAS breakpoint, uh, which basically means that you're stuck at a slower speed with crossbows. Crossbows are mainly for classes that don't have IAS, that are very poor with IAS. Like, for instance, if you're like a necromancer or a sorceress or something, and you just don't have any increased attack speed whatsoever, crossbows are the superior choice because they're closer to their maximum breakpoint, um, and you don't really need a lot of increased attack speed to get there. Bows, however, are slower, but they have a higher maximum speed, which means that with additional increased attack speed, they're always faster than a crossbow. Hopefully I made that clear. Now, another option I was considering was a Doom. Doom does have relatively low durability, but a nice two-handed Doom could be interesting. We'll have to give it a try with a Doom, see how well the Doom works. Start using WordPad? Never. WordPad's slow. It's for losers. Where to we use a Doom? Doom could be interesting, but what would we put it in? We need something with really high durability. I think the highest durability choice is a Giant Thresher. And would the Doom really be higher damage than what we're currently using? That's a good question also. Oh god, dulls. Did I consider dolls? I don't know if I did consider dolls. I guess technically my Merc deals with those with the knockback since they're undead. So he should be knocking them back constantly because they're undead creatures. Let's see how he deals with them. Yeah, he's pretty much just annihilating them. So I guess the Merc's Sanctuary Aura pretty much deals with them, no problem. Decrepified. My ravens are over here picking on the skeleton. Stop melting me. I have 3,000% poison res. Oh, 
Oh wow, they melted my mercenary. That was crazy. You know, I think trying out the uh, the Doom could be interesting. I think we'll break it really fast on a Fury. Like it's it'll be interesting, but Giant Thresher. Kill Bale real quick first, and then we'll go get the Doom. And we'll try the Doom. No, nah, the Chumpy Axe not got uh, the crowd control. This is a crowd control thing. It's all about the crowd, 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 crowd control, troll, trolly, trolly, troll, 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 crowd control, troll, trolly, trolly, troll, crowd, crowd control, troll, trolly, trolly, troll, crowd, crowd, crowd control, trolly, trolly, troll. If what I just did to these minions of destruction didn't impress you to the literal crazy amount of crowd control that I have, I literally locked them down to the point where they could do absolutely nothing. They were stunned, chilled, slowed frozen like literally just locked down to the point where they couldn't do anything in return to me and I just kind of laughed in their face and 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 yes laughed in their face ha 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 like that that's what that's that's what it was like ha 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 I was looking for a scroll of town portal so I could go back and get my Merc. I just need one scroll of the town portal. Oh lord, there's dollies. Oh, there's so many dollies. I do not like the dolly dollies. They do not want to play. I do not want to play with them. They are not nice, and I do not like them. Oh no! Down the bad time to down transform. Mighted dolls. No. No, ni, no, ni, no, ni, no, ni, no. They're immune to me. I do not like them. They are mean. They are so mean. Come here, Bale. Attack all your tentacles. I need more crushing. Blow, 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 blow. A nice pair of CV gloves would go a long way on this character, too. The laying of hands is nice and all, but I feel like the CV gloves would be better. A little bit of, little bit of CV. A little bit of crushing blow in my life. A little bit of CV for my strife. I got a little bit of hurricanes. I wanna kill Bale today as lame. It's crazy, even 14 or 15,000 AR, I'm still missing like constantly. That's because he blocks all my attacks. Miss, 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 miss. Look how many misses I got. Look, look. Miss, 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 mi
Alright, let's go get this Doom weapon real quick. I can, uh, we gotta, we gotta edit in a nice, uh, Doom two-hander. And I do not have a Doom two-hander just laying around, so... Let's just pick a random character to put it on. Sorry for all the dings and dongs. Mm. All right. Rude words, weapons. Doom. Uh, we need Doom in a non-F item. A BA. What, Berserker's Axe? That's a Cryptic's Axe. That's F. Okay, we don't want F, because that's just silly. So let's specific, ethereal, make item not ethereal. Uh, we want a faster weapon, so general edit. edit. Uh, dur, 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 dur. Item code. We we want giant thresher. Why you always gotta do that? Why can't you just go to the G's? Why you gotta be all <laughs> about it? Okay. Uh, and Doom is a five socket, so we need to make sure that it still has five sockets, which it probably doesn't. Okay, there we go. All right, save. Oop. There we go. Alright, so let's copy over video items three. What the hell is going on over here? You see it? You see it right here? You see it? Look, it's on the wrong screen. It pisses me off. I gotta, like, make it go over to the right screen. Boop. Boop. Magifine does not affect runes, Rosie. It does not affect runes. Okay, so the difference between the two is pretty significant damage-wise. I also get a little percent chance to spawn volcanoes. I lose my Frost Nova, though, which is rather unfortunate, but I do gain negative 60% enemy cold resistance. And I do gain Freeze's Target, which is an interesting addition. So I was talking earlier about how I didn't like the fact that I didn't have Freeze Target. Well, now I do have Freeze Target. So now the monsters are going to be even more chilly. So let's see how this rolls out with uh, slightly lower level Holy Freeze, but we do get 45% increased attack speed. Hmm. Should be hitting our, our one of our higher breakpoints at this point. All right, and uh, since we were having trouble in Players 8, let's move it to Players 8. Let's move the needle. Bring our mercenary back up. Yep, negative 60% is a pretty hefty amount. We actually have more than that. We're running negative 65%. We lost the 30% cold skill damage there, which I don't know if that's really going to make much of a difference, but...
I mean, for P8, the damage is actually surprisingly good. Got to see how long it takes to break this chest pressure. We also could probably change our stats around a little bit. Haha, you guys got all blinded. That's not bad for PA. It's not bad at all. Try somewhere with some physimunes. Oh yeah, I know the problem's durability. It's got 65 durability though in a Giant Thresher, that's why I specifically chose the Giant Thresher. The giant Thresher is the fastest out of the lot. Well, highest durability out of the lot. on the other hand. Just procking it, see if it makes any difference in my uh, my damage output here. It definitely seems to be hitting a really high breakpoint with this Doom weapon, that's for sure. I mean, this is P8. These are immune to physicals. We also have immune to colds in here as well. So, I mean, it's certainly not a terrible test of the character's ability. Poor Ghosties can't even stay on the platform. I'm actually particularly impressed with this Lightning Spire skill kill speed. That's actually not bad at all. P8 is not really something that you balance around. Let's bring this down to P4. And uh, let's go to another zone. Look at me, I'm fast. I'm missing all the burgers falling off the edge. I'm not even killing the skull, the skull, the ghost. I don't have any ranged abilities. And the number of twisters that I spawn is ridiculous. It might not be readily apparent in the uh, in the like this this mode, but if I were to go to like the classic mode, <laughs> that looks so silly. If I go to the classic mode, you'll see all the freaking twisters just like spawning all over the place. 
They're a little bit easier to see, but I notice also I'm kind of just like flooding the screen with effects, which makes it kind of difficult to see even in the classic mode. Cameroon in the Jalals would fix cannot be frozen problem, which that's, uh, that's doable. That's doable. I'm not even also. I'm not even sure if I still need the 10% increased attack speed by switching to the Doom. I think the uh, attack speed has gone up significantly with um, with this particular weapon over the bow. We can always check and see what my breakpoint is, but... Ooh, yeah, sarcophagus. And there it is. The Achilles heel of the Doom weapon. Do you guys see it? Do you guys see the Achilles heel of the Doom weapon? It just appeared in the top right-hand corner of my screen. Interesting fight. Chill versus chill over here. Duriel's chilled and I'm chilled. Oh, dang it. I hate that about the werewolf druid uh, and the werebear druid. I hate all, I just randomly chasing, changing back in combat. Let's see how this thing performs in P1, just out of curiosity. We always test all the different modes and everything. If I was a little better about casting my Cyclone armor also, I wouldn't have much issue with elemental damage. But I'm a slacker. Let's go to somewhere like Halls of Pain. That sounds fun. Test out different areas. Yeah, he pretty much just shreds in P1. Most of these monsters can't even touch him. Just absolutely shreds it. Wow, even the mighty quill rats fell like trash. I guess that's what happens when you can freeze the monsters into oblivion. Well, I want to see how long it takes me to break. Punch all of you to death with my bare hands. These are the bear werewolf hands that are coming for you, sucker, please. Oh, come on down and let me show you my fleas. I got these 
bear werewolf hands. I'm gonna smack you in your hands. I'll kick you right in your teeth with my paws. Yeah. These are the bear werewolf hands. My evil bear werewolf hands. Let me tell you all about my hands. I can always switch to my shadow though for right now. Wow, the speed on that thing though is crazy. I'm definitely hitting some high breakpoints. A bear wolf. I know nobody ever wants to drop me a, 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 a town portal scroll. Nobody ever wants to drop me a town portal scroll, a town portal scroll, a town portal scroll. Nobody ever wants to drop me a town portal scroll when I need to get my butt back to town. I could always keep around some ort runes. I don't have any ort runes on me right now. Unfortunate. Poor unfortunate orts. Let's go get corpse exploded, boys. Give me a dang town portal scroll. Three eons later. Ginger never did find that in old Fernal town portal scroll. But he did find a piece of his own soul. For deep down he knew... He should have bought portal in <laughs> town portal scrolls before he left, but no, he didn't because he's a fool. Haha, uh -huh. chop chop. Nobody knows the trouble I've seen. It's gonna kill me. It's gonna kill me, guys. Get a Merc, you can do it. You can do it, Merc. I'm gonna be over here. You can do it. Oh, what's up, Neil? Thank you. You should have stacked with your minions. Alright, let's see how much it costs to repair my big old doom doomity doom doom. Afternoon. So just the weapon, three hundred and sixty-eight thousand six hundred and forty gold. Oof. Chains of honor, two hundred and thirty-eight thousand five hundred and ninety-two gold. Oof. Big oof. That's what you call a big oof. That's what you call the big oof. Come on down to the big oof. We got a lot of big oof. Big oof. 
I like big oofs and I cannot lie. I go to the treasurer and sigh at all of the gold that I have to spend when I repair my doom weapon. It costs a frickin' ton. I don't know what to tell you about none of this, son. There's no inheritance, cause I spent it all my friend at the blacksmith to repair my doom weapon again. And once I repaired it about three or four times, I burned up all my treasury and I have lost my mind and there's no inheritance, no gold. We're broke, son, eating mold. We have no money, son. We're going to go to jail, yo. I tried to sell my doom weapon to <laughs> to Larzik. He laughed and chuckled and wheezed and fell down. He said, boy, I wouldn't buy that if you asked me to and you gave it to me for a dollar fifty two because it sucks. It breaks all the time and you got to repair it every while. <laughs> Why do you think I charge you so much and I laugh and giggle with glee when you come because I look. And I see that it's broken again. And then I know I'm going to get paid all the gold in my hand to repair that. And I know you want to repair it because it's so freaking sweet. But it breaks all the time. And this is why I got a Bentley. <laughs> uh, freaking Larzik over there. He's like, he's like, oh, somebody's got a doom weapon. <laughs> He's like, he goes home to his wife. He's like, babe, he came in and repaired the doom weapon again. You know what that means? He's like slinging gold coins on the bed. <laughs> his wife is like dancing. Like, oh my God, we're so rich. Oh, uh, it is a nice weapon, though. It is. It's just really costly to repair. And it breaks all the time. Hmm. Hmm. Let's go slap around Rock and Ishu real quick. right boys I like big doom weapons even though they tend to break I take them back to Larzik and he starts to shake with glee as he sees all the gold from me and I repair that weapon again and then I'm broke ain't got no money son ain't got nothing in the treasury hun my wife asked for bread and I told her that we're dead I can't afford nothing, and that's when she said, I'm leaving. You can keep your weapon. Nobody wants that stupid broken weapon. That doom freaking sword, axe, whatever the hell. It doesn't matter anyway. We can't even feed our child today. Why are you paying so much money to Larzik? You know what? Go away. Chop, 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 Hurricane, get in there. Die, Grosswald. I like CC. That's right. The double, double, double CC. Crowd control is all I like. I want to make them go down real slow. Chilly and freezy, yo. Like they forgot their sweater when they went outside and their mom scolded them about three times. Hey, honey, don't forget your sweater in the shop. And she, she said, you're going to freeze. And I said, Mom, I'm a grown adult. I don't need to take my sweater outside. But then I got out there and my nipples were hard and I can't really explain it. It was really quite bad. Yes, they were, they were, they were cutting glass. Like they were just...
<laughs> Cody Cody's ears went up when I did that. He's like he's like Cody. Cody. Cody, come here. Gotta drag the big dog into the screen. Cody, ready? Ready? <laughs> I like big dogs. No, I don't. I don't like them at all. Actually, they suck because they knock everything off of the furniture and the cups. They knock over every cup. You can't keep a drink in the house for the save your life because the tail comes along and it smacks it right off the table. And then people scream. Kubus, what are you doing to Boobus? Why do you knock all my cups down? It's not very nice at all. <laughs> And I like to bump into your chair and knock your hand while you're using your mouse so you die. And then everybody laughs. And that's why I can't play hardcore, y'all. Look at these teeth. Look at these big, look at these big things. Look at the big teeth in there. Look, look at those teeth in there. Big chompers. Look at these chompers. I said, leave them alone. Those are my chompers. Why you got such big fangs for, huh? What are those for? What are you using these? What are you using these big fangs for? What are you using them for? Huh? Big old wolf fangs. <laughs> Just messing with the dog. That poor archer had been getting knocked back for about 10 years. Can you make rift in a pole axe? I think you can, yeah. <coughs> Type in exclamation point rift. I thought it was scepters. But scepters and something else. I think there's another option. Yeah, pole arms and scepters. feel like I fully tested the character out. Uh, let's do some more P3 testing. I want to go check out some more Doom Lords. Um, let's fight some Doom Lords. I need a couple of those. <coughs> Come on down and touch my toes. Uh, I've already been down here. Okay, so let's go to the next game. Oh, that's cute. They got fanaticism. Said. Well, I'd say the character is a success. Like, I don't know, there's nothing wrong with this character. He slows down a little bit in P8, but I really, I mean, with the Doom, it's actually a lot better than it was with the Ice. P8 Doom is definitely better. Repair cost on the Doom is a little rough, but.
You know, I'm definitely a fan of this build. I like it. I think I might have come up with a really interesting freaking um, Merc, Merc combo too. But we ain't even been up here that long, buddy. What's the matter? You gotta go Dukas? You gotta go Peppa Dudas? You got the you got the pooping squirts? You got the you got the they got the running trots? He said running trots? I'm not a horse. A mythical sword with three sockets. Cody, if you don't stop bumping my chair, I swear, you bump my chair so much. I swear you do it on purpose, too. You walk right by the chair and literally bump the whole chair, and I just be like, blah, 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 blah. And then you, I swear you turn around and you grin and you laugh like, like, look what I did. Ha, ha, ha. Bump this chair again. <laughs> it's true. It's true. So you need to see me talking to the dog. I need I need you guys to see this. Hold on. Hold on. I can I can I can remove one of my filters here. Hold on. Let's see here. Boop. Yeah, here we go. You bumped my chair on purpose, didn't you? Didn't you? You bumped my chair? I know you did. Don't lie to me. You walk right by and you bump my chair. You just bumped it on purpose. And, you just and then you turn around and laugh, don't you? Don't you? You just be laughing about it. You do. You just be laughing. You just like, oh, I bumped this chair today. I bumped, it. I bumped this chair three more times. How many times I got bump his chair? Maybe if I bump his chair like six more times. Maybe if I bump his chair a couple more times, he'll pay attention to me. He's not paying attention to me. All right, time to bump his chair. No, no, you can't get away this time. Everybody can see you just fine. Big old, big old honking monster dog. Look at this. The head is just, a, it's like a tick size head compared to the rest of his body down here. Look at this monster thing down here. Look at this monster dog. He's got a harness. He's got a handle so I can try and pick him up. Look, I'm gonna do the claw. You ready? We gonna do the claw. Well, if I stick my finger up your nose, how about that? <laughs> You want to finger them in your nose? You want to finger them in your nose? Put it right in there. How about that? Would you like a cheese it? Would you do a good set for me? <laughs> will you give me? Will you give me a pow? Will you give me a pow? Give me the pow. I need a pow. You want this cheese it? You better give me a pow. Give me the pow. I don't want licks. Give me the pow. Give me a pow. Come on. Nah, you did you just trying to steal that? You did not. Don't <laughs> Weirdo. Okay. We're gonna play a game. Okay. We're going to play a game. All right, here's the game. If you're a good boy, you get the whole stack. But you got to wait. You ready? Sit. All right. Leave it. Leave it. This is a game of patience. Basically, what I'm teaching him is I'm just teaching him that the longer he waits, the more he gets. Leave it. 
he'll start drooling. He'll be drooling real big. It was like just streams of drool coming down. But he but he knows that the longer he waits, the more chomps that he gets. Oh, look at that. You leave it. You want some more chomps it? So there's another one for the pile. There's another one for the pile. There's another one. He's getting tempted now. It's a lot of cheeses. He's getting real tempted. He said, wait a minute. That's a lot right there. He said, how many are you going to pile up? That's a lot of cheeses there. Okay, you ready? Yes. <laughs> he said, those my cheeses. He said, I waited. I was a good boy. He said, and I get all the chomses. You missed one. <laughs> I got to clean off my mouse pad. That wasn't very smart of me. Ugh. That's some slobums there. That's some professional dog grade slobums. That's my life, though. My life is dog slobber. I kind of used to it at this point, to be perfectly honest. <laughs> I'm kind of used to it at this point. <laughs> he would eat the whole box. You better, you little thief. He stole something out the trash can and he ran away. It was, uh, <laughs> believe it or not, it was literally a, a paper towel. He just stole a paper towel out of the trash can and, and ran away with it. You see him over here? Look, that's his little that's his little kennel. That's where he likes the little his little sleeping place. He's got his little bed in there, and he just he just took the the paper towel to the kennel to go eat it. Whoop. Alright, I think I'm done with this build. I want to call it a success. I think it's a success. Um, I mean, it works. Whether you want to use the ice bow or whether you want to use the doom bow or the doom doom weapon. I feel like the ice weapon um, is definitely better in terms of, like, output. Um, I don't know how to put it. Like, like, you know, obviously the fact that it's indestructible. Um, and then on top of that, it's also... It has that Frost Nova proc, which is really neat. It, there's a lot of AoE going on there with the Frost Nova proc. Uh, the Doom, on the other hand, I think is the superior choice. It's just not exactly the one that has the best durability. It breaks really often, and it costs a lot to repair. I think, in general, I would definitely say the Doom was the, the better choice out of the two, between the two. What's up, Bob? I need to see you in here. How's it going? Alright, let's boot up regular Diablo so we can go play some real Diablo. Your Battle.net account has been logged in somewhere else. Yep, I was doing a trade on my Steam Deck. Oh yeah, I can show you guys what I traded for, too. I finally got one of my best in slot pieces for my uh for my fire golem. Um on my Infernus character. <laughs> you might be wondering what I'm talking about, but I replaced my plus two plus three fire golem uh one with a plus three plus three with uh plus three to uh, Fire Golem and plus three to Golem Mastery. 
uh, which is a pretty solid summoning um, hell, a little, little, little wand there. Uh, which brings me up to a massive total of level 49 Fire Golem at the moment, which is just, it, it, yeah, it's sickening. He costs 434 mana to summon at this particular point. Him's a big boy, Fire Golem. Him's a big boy. Near by him, the biggest of boys. Him, the big old boy. Didn't I say that this wand was impossible? No, this wand is not impossible. The wand that the guy wanted was impossible. I'd have to show you the wand that the crazy guy wanted to make. I mean, to give you an idea, it was a rare wand. It had plus two necro skills, two sockets, plus three fire golem, plus three skeletal mage, plus three... I can't even remember what the other plus three was. Uh, I think it was plus three revives. And then it had, like, god-tier stats on it. And just the, the rarest wand that you'd ever... Like, it, it doesn't exist, really. Like, there's no way. Like, and two sockets... Come on, forget about it. It's hard enough getting getting everything you want, uh, but getting the two sockets too on top of it is just is just yeah, okay. All right. Yeah. Yo. Coming at you with my high-level fire golem. Sometimes when you're like standing behind something, it'll make the animation like you're uh, re reviving, but then like it doesn't actually do it like this. Look, you're in line of sight, and then it refunds the mana too that it costs to try and like pretend to revive the monster. It's because I wasn't not in line of sight, but for some reason it still makes the sound effect like it works. It's really weird. Did Fire Golem get buffed or something? No. <laughs> No. No. Fire Golem did not get buffed. Um, this is a, a fire necromancer build. It's based around the, the fire damage type. Basically, I just use all fire damage types um, to get as much fire damage as I possibly can, including an enchant merc. Uh, the works, basically. So the the entire goal of this character is to dish out as much fire damage as possible. The fire, so the fire golem leans to that like side of things, which is exactly what we're looking for. Cody's a good ass boy. He said sometimes, if you got treats. How many treats do you got? He said, because that's the real question. He goes, let me let me analyze the quality. The quality of these treats as well. I need to make sure today's good quality. <laughs> Cody's just staring into my soul right now. Just staring into my soul. I wonder if I can modify my uh, my webcam just ever so slightly so that you guys can see him. 
it might not work very well, but let's see. Let me do a little bit of editing. Edit filters. Okay. Um, bum, 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 bum. Okay, first off. Yeah. All right. Left. There you go. Now you can see him better. Look. Now Mr. Kubis Abubis the monster dog will show up every now and then. <laughs> and he just stares at me. Look at him. Look at him. He's just staring into my soul. And then he whines. Right now he's drooling all over me, which I do not particularly adore. Could he say it with me? That he's upset with me now <laughs> he said no that's rude say things like that to me I don't even know what that means I don't speak that language you want one of them Cheez-Its there there come get a Cheez-It here you gotta be a shark you ready you ready to be a shark Ow, he bit my nipple. Ow! <laughs> Just because there was a cheese it on my nipple doesn't mean you get to bite the nipple. <laughs> mean! I shouldn't even give you. No, you know what? You know what? You don't get it because you bit my nipple. I'm not, I'm not, I'm not. Turd face. Nipple biter. <laughs> What's up, Doom? I literally just finished the uh, lockdown druid. It's uh, basically a druid that's based all around as much crowd control as I can possibly get into him. Squeezing in there. If you want to check it out, um, I'm sure the VOD will be up, or you could also you can go over to YouTube right now and you could just rewind the stream. You can't rewind the stream on uh, on Twitch; uh, it doesn't work that way. Oh yeah, that's how you feel, Cody. I'm gonna have to kindly and politely ask you to uh, to quit drooling all over me. It would be nice. It would be, it would be really nice if I didn't get slimed like once. Come here, come here. If I didn't get slimed like once in a while. There. You have been deslimed. Did you just lick my shirt because there was some some cheese it crumbs on there? You're weird. You're a weird dog. I said not weird. They said that's not true. Me regular dog. He said, you, you don't, you just don't like regular dogs. Uh, Voice of Reason is mainly for the Merc. I'm not entirely even sure that Voice of Reason is a good choice for the Merc. I'm still trying to decide. That boy's name is Warp Cloud. That's a cool name. It's too bad you're dead. You can be really cool when you're dead. It'll look good on your tombstone. being rude to me. There's so many drowned carcasses all over the place.
Great Marsh is not a good TZ. Let me tell you that much. You never seen my streams before, Very Berry Barbie? Oh, that's terrible. I stream like every day. Yeah. Not every day. I think about every day. Maybe I shouldn't stream every day. Seems like a lot. That seems successful. But I definitely do stream every day. Sometimes I skip a day because I'm not feeling too good. This stream won't be very long, unfortunately, because I do have to go to night shift. I gotta work night shift tonight, so we're probably gonna cut this stream after a while. I really just wanted to do the theory craft because I've been talking about it and I wanted to get it down on, you know, so to speak, down on paper, so to speak, and uh, and I did. So now I kind of want to play around with my, my necromancer. Little bit of necromancer. Want you to know I got a little necromancer. Oh yeah, we gotta do our daily ritual of um, of checking for our necro head. So we still need a we still need a plus three plus three necro head. So let's do a uh, let's do a quick checky poo. Let's do a quick checky poo. See if we can find our plus three plus three necro head. Yes. So let's do our daily tradery check. Boop. Mm. All right. So what we're looking for is a summoning necro head. Uh, why are you not working? Summoning necromancer. Alright, we need a, a three. Apply. Uh, this is also a ladder. And we also want a three. Ah, uh, sorry. Fire Golem. Three. There are no listings. <laughs> Oh. Let's take off the fire golem. So there are plus threes, just not the one that we're looking for. Alright, let's try this. Uh, fire. Let's try fire golem uh, two. Let's see if there's a fire golem two alive anywhere. Uh, two wands. We don't need wands because we already have a really good wand. So... Not interested in either one of those. We need a necro head. Okay, there's one other choice. It's not exactly the best in slot, but let's try it anyway. So, so three fire golem. Close that. Um, and then we also need uh, plus two. So necro monster skills. Let's see if we can find a plus two. Hmm. There's a plus two, plus three. Currently on the market. March 6th, 2024. That's that's uh, kind of really long time ago, actually. So that's probably not still up. Doubt it. Mm. Doubt it. Mm. Um, let's try another setup. So let's try summoning skills necromancer, but instead let's do two. Okay. So no, don't really have what we're looking for. We need uh, we need one very similar to basically what we have here, which is the golem lord's uh, fire golem wand. So we need a head that has basically the same stats on it. Right now we have a plus four. 
which is okay. But this is plus six. So if we can get two plus sixes, that'll be plus 12. Uh, to our fire golem, and then we'll have an even higher level fire golem. And that is uh, what we want. We want all of the levels of the fire golem. We want more golem levels that a man can rightfully golem a golem at. I want my golem to be so high level that I need BO just to cast him. Mm -hmm. Yes. That high. Alright. Blizzard hurts. I always check this evil urn. You know why I always check this evil urn? Because that's where I got a freaking Griffin's idea before. This exact same place. Can lightning strike twice? I don't know. Maybe. Okay. Shut up. Stop judge. Don't be. Don't be a judgy judge. Okay. Don't be the judgy judge. Do not do the judge. The judgy judgy judge. And corpse exploding is what we like to do. Cause we corpse explode everything for you. Aw, are you dead, Neil Attack? Aww. It's almost as if you couldn't take your own medicine. It's almost as if you couldn't take your own medicine. Best weapon for an Act 2 Holy Freeze Merc? Um, I mean, what kind of character are you? Obedience is probably one of the best weapons for Act 2 Merc, pretty much like bar none. Um, I mean, if you need meditation, you can go with an Insight. Kubus Abubus the Monsum Doll. What do you want from me? What does you, what do you want from me? What does the Kubus Abubus want? Does the Kubus want snacks? Does the Kubus want Cheez-Its? Does the Kubus want Wadams? Does him want Buds? Do you want Pickums? How about some Pickums? Do you want Pockerns? Pickums and Pockerns? Pockerns and Pickums? Impossible. <laughs> I, I swear you could just tell a dog a story about food and they would be enthralled. Just, just that would be the whole story. You just talk to them about food. Like, that's their whole life anyway, is food. So, like, you just start telling them a story. You're like, once upon a time, there was a hamburger. And the hamburger went along and he had lots of friends. There was bacon. There was cheese. There was popcorns. There was chomzits. And they all went on a venture together. And they said, we want to go swimming in the ketchup pool. And in the ketchup pool, they jumped in. And they all started doing laps around the ketchup pool. And the popcorn got ketchup on it. And the pickums got ketchup on it. And the hot dogs got ketchup on it. <laughs> he got excited. He picked up his toy and he started running around. I think all the talk about food made him excited. A fury zone? What's a fury zone? Fury zone. Why am I drawing a blank? Lightning Fury? Lightning Fury. 
I've never heard anybody call it a Fury Bomb. <laughs> I got confused there for a second. Honestly, Fury Zons usually want to set up for cows. Because that's like your bread and butter is farming cows. You usually want to just throw like a shaft stop, a freaking uh, a bulwark, and uh, an obedience on that bad boy and just roll through the cows. He'll be your best buddy in the cow level. He'll never die. With a, sh with, with a shaft stop, a bulwark, and an obedience, he won't ever die. Not to cows, anyway. He'll die to other stuff, but he won't die to cows. And he becomes like your god tier tank. I usually rig my uh, my Merc with when I'm doing lightning through. I rig them for the cows. I can't carry oh, yeah? That's how you think, Cody? You say, Rrr. Cody said, Rrr. Cody said, Rrr. Cody said, Cody said, Cody said, Rrr. Cody, go get me your alum gator. Cody, where's your alum gator? Hmm? Where's the alum gator? I don't see Mr. Alum Gator. See if he brings him over. Sometimes he's stingy with his alligator. He doesn't want to bring his alligator over. He said, "No, that's my. That is my alligator. He is not yours, alligator. He's a man." I see you, Mister Alligator. Come here, bring him here. Let me see him. I'm trying to teach him the concept of trade. I'm trying to teach him the concept of trade. Here, Cody. I'll trade you a cheese it for your alligator. You want to trade? There. Got to trade. I need an alum gator and you get a cheese it. I rent him. I'm renting. Renting the alum gator. Thank you. That's my alum gator now. Thank you. He's mine forever. He said, no, that's just a rental fee. He said, you can't have it forever. I said, that's not how this works. I'm, I'm taking back. You get, well, you got like two minutes. And then he's going back with me. I mean, insight is definitely one that you can make for poor. You don't, you don't gotta be, you don't gotta be rich to make an insight. Finding the base is half the trouble for the insight. Once you find the base, you can just re-roll it over and over again until you get a nice one. Cody, I got your alum gator. He said, "No, that's my gator." It's a tough man. No, you gave him to me for a cheese. It him's mine now. You can't have it. No, that's mine. That's my gator. That's my gator. <laughs> that's my gator. He'll get upset too. Watch. That's my gator. Him's gonna sit with me <laughs> right here. <laughs> he said, "You better give me that. That's mine." Taking people's toys. I don't care if you pay to cheese it. That's not enough. Him's worth more than that. That's a bamboo. <laughs> he gave me a heckin' bork, didn't he? He said, who you fooling? And then he brings him back. Look. Watch this. Ready? Watch. Watch. Yeah. <laughs> and then he runs away. That's his whole game. He loves keep away. I don't know why. That's his favorite game. Keep away is his favorite game. Ah! You don't even have to actually reach for it. All you gotta do is say, you better give me that. You better give me that gator. You better give me that gator.
What bases are you looking for for an insight pole arm? You're looking for pole arms, ethereal, elite bases. So things like uh, ethereal four socket cryptic axe, ethereal four socket uh, thresher, ethereal four socket giant thresher, ethereal four socket great pole axe, um, ethereal four socket colossus vold. What? You got to that butt. You better sit. You better sit. Sit. Ready. Tacos. Ready. Batman. Ready. Go karts. Ready. Texas. Ready. Chocolate tacos. Ready. Go. That's another form of training. It's called anticipation training or something like that. I am. Basically, you say the wrong word because a lot of the times the dog will just simply, you know, jump every single time you go to throw it. Like, he's got to know that you're not actually going to throw it. And the only way to teach him that is to is to say the wrong word and then pretend to throw it. And then he knows that he's only supposed to go if you say the right word. Give me this. Give me this. Give me this. Gatums. <laughs> All right, ready? Sit. 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 You're not paying attention. You got to a side there to see your tail flopping, but you got to see it. Sometimes you got to say it just right. Sit. All right, we're not going to do it if you don't do the sit. You got to do the sit. You know the rules. That's the rules. Uh-uh. You got to do the sit. Sit down. Okay, that's a good boy to the sit. Okay, you ready? Ready, Texas. Ready, chocolate. Ready, gummy bears. Ready, <laughs> ready, go karts. Ready, go. Oh no, Rosie, you died? That's okay, you can go pick your body back up. Unless you're playing hardcore. If you're playing hardcore, well, then you're screwed. Then you're screwed. Of course, sometimes picking your body back up can be trouble. You can also, if you've only died once, and only once, if you've only died once, you can just leave the game and come back. You will lose your progress in the match, and you'll lose the gold that you dropped on the ground, but your body will be waiting for you back in town, and you can pick it up. Alligator always looks so cool on the green screen. He's got like a, like some of him is green enough to to mix in with like the uh, the background, and some of him isn't. Okay, you ready? Okay, do a sit, 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 sit. You're not sitting. I know you think you're sitting because your butt kind of went down a little bit like you were pretending to sit. But I don't know who you think you're fooling. You ain't fooling me. What, did you just hit the help B key on my keyboard? Oh, you coming up there. You better get down. You better get down. <laughs> Dang it, where'd my mouse go? He's so rude. He knocked my mouse right off my dude, Jank. Look, he's back already. Won't take him but like a half a second. Well, I see you're back. And I see you brought your alligator. He's so bored with life. Let's go chopping. Ooh, choppity, choppity, chop, chop, chop. Choppity, choppity, chop, chop, chop. Mm. I need a little bit of chopping in my life. Chop, 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 ch
articulated, man. What did the TZ change to? Spider forest and spider cavern? It's kind of yucky. It, it's not that I necessarily dislike spider forest from a TZ standpoint, but it, density wise, it's really bad. Most of the time when you come in here, there's like no density. You'll run around half the time looking for monsters to kill. I mean, yeah, you'll find the occasional pack or two, but like. Good luck. Good luck. Fine. Will you quit bumping my chair? You are just the bumpinest bumping chair bumper that ever bumped and bumped chair land. You see him bumping my chair, right? You saw him that time. He just walks by. He'd he be bumping everything. He don't care. He don't care about nothing. All he care about is bumping chairs. That's what he care about. I'm gonna go fight Cody. That's what we're gonna do. I'm gonna fight him. See who wins. Me versus Cody. Mono e mono. You know, I think if you put some chainmail on a dog, I think he'd be pretty tough to beat. A little bit of chain mail on there, he'd be set. A little bit of chain mail in my life. Mm. A little bit of chain mail, your home run. Oh yeah, I need to roll this thresher. Boomstick, do you need a thresher? Cause like I got, I got a thresher right here. Let's try and roll this. Let's see what we get. Maybe I'll get a four socket one for you. Maybe. I believe it's uh, Talthol Perfect Topaz. I want to say Talthol Perfect Topaz. I could be wrong. No, it's Ral Am. I'm thinking of a different recipe. It's Ral Am Perfect Amethyst. Okay. Hmm, five socket. Okay. That's not terrible. It's not four socket, but that's five socket. That's an obedience. It's a pretty that's a pretty solid obedience base. Mm -hmm. What was I saying about getting a base and re-rolling it? Not re-rolling it, but rolling it. Uh, like I just did. I literally just rolled this ethereal thresher base and I got five sockets, not four. Which I was hoping for four, but five's not bad. Three sockets is a good hustle base. Um, four sockets is insight or infinity. Uh, five sockets is obedience. Um, now yeah, there's there's some pretty decent little bases that you can potentially have. I mean, there's a lot of various weapons that can be useful on mercenaries. It's not uh, like a a singular do jank. What does that mean? I missed it. Um, I literally just put the recipe up there. It's it's right here. Socket, weapon. If you put that a weapon in the cube with that recipe, it will roll the sockets between one and the maximum number of sockets capable for that item. 
Um, in the case of a Thresher, it's between 1 and 5. So when you roll the sockets, you're basically taking an item with no sockets and rolling it to see how many sockets it will get. It only works on white items. I guess technically gray items, since ethereal items are technically gray. But that doesn't, that's just technicality. <coughs> No. What's up, Steph? I am overburdened. Hmm. I wonder if I just re-rolled ahead. Like, could I eventually... I mean, it'd be really, really rare for me to actually get the modifiers that I want on a head, but I guess theoretically, I could always just sit here and re-roll the heads over and over again. Let's give it a try. Shimmering Demon Head of Balance. Summoner's Demon Head, plus one Necro, plus three Iron Golem. Not what I'm looking for, but interesting, interesting. Plus two Life Tap. Plus two attract. Wah, 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 wah. Use my skulls too, why not? Holy demon head. Plus two bone prison and plus one bone spear. guys and gals. I hate to dip on you so soon, but I do got to get to work tonight. And uh, I want to get a nap before I leave. I haven't uh, actually gotten any sleep before my night shift. It would be probably a good idea to get a nap before I leave. Also, Cody's throwing a fit because he's probably got diarrhea butt. That's right. I said it. Diarrhea butt. <laughs> I hope you guys enjoyed the theory craft today. Um, definitely a very fun and very viable build. Um, certainly works out just fine. Lots of crowd control. Everything's locked down for the most part. Uh, damage on the Doom was definitely better than damage on the Ice. And, uh, yeah, just, just a very fun looking build, honestly, just in general. Anyway, as always, I do appreciate you guys and gals joining me for these fun little adventures. And, uh, as always, keep watching.